Hello and welcome to another Cinema 4D tutorial. My name is Ricardo Silva and today we're going to be finishing the modeling of a coffee mug. In this practice of modeling, I suggested to use three different methods of modeling. And uh, those three methods were the loft, polygons and late. We have already created those three basic models or shapes, okay? So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to go from uh, these three different objects to this particular one. So we're going to be converting the loft and the late object to polygonal model in order to achieve this shape. So let's go jump to Cinema 4D now. And in here, I have the late object. So let me go ahead into the polygonal first. And notice that uh, whenever I created the polygonal, I had more control of how my polygons were laid out because I was selecting the lines and everything. And I can still cut some of the elements to basically choose where those lines or the polygons are going to be. If you notice, every single polygon is more uniform. In other words, the shape and size and proportion is basically the same throughout. Also, if you remember, on this uh, object, we achieved this uh, part, this bottom part, meaning that we were able to maintain our quads even on these difficult parts. If I look at the loft coffee mug, then the loft gave me a lot of more polygons, as you can see. So this is a, a heavier scene, but at the same time, I can uh, reduce that by going into the loft and changing some of these uh, parameters. So that's not, not a big deal. Okay, I can control that resolution here in the controls. But down here, uh, it gave me kind of like a, like an end gun, meaning that, you know, if I was actually modeling something that we're going to be looking at from this uh, angle, then it probably I would have to, you know, convert it to polygonal mode and then do the same trick as I did with the polygonal uh, back uh, in the tutorial that we did the polygonal to fix that. Okay, but we're not going to do that in here. I'm just telling you what are the possibilities potential problems and so on. The other one, the one that we did with the late, then the late actually uh, by itself created this layout of polygons. As you can see, the polygons are not necessarily the same size or proportion. They kind of like change. And uh, as you can see here, it, it basically added more, a lot of polygons for that rounding in there. Okay. So, that's one of those things that uh, these uh, objects, these parametric objects, they, they have. They, they do the, the things the way they, they think is better for whatever parameters are in there. And of course, you can go into the late object and, uh, you know, reduce the subdivision or increase it. Uh, so you have certain control, of course. The same thing if you go to the spline and then you increase uh, certain... Uh, parameters here, then you change the curvature of your spline, in other words, trying to minimize the number of polygons that you are creating, okay? So I'm just going to leave it uh, at, uh, let's say, I'm going to put more polygons, there you go, something like, like so, maybe three degrees, there you go, something like that, perfect. So the polygons are more uniform and so forth. Okay, so... I have these three objects and all three objects, they are actually two of the objects, they have to be converted into polygonal because we need to actually pull some geometry out of uh, this geometry to create that little handle to grab the cup of coffee, the, the coffee mug. Now to convert this to polygonal, I am going to go and select the late object and once again I go to objects and tell it current state to object. When I do this command I make sure that I am left with the original shape in case I need to go back and use it. So I'm going to select current state to object 
it gives me the late polygonal object. And then this guy, I'm going to turn these guys, the traffic lights, to red, meaning that we are not looking at that anymore. Okay, so now this is our polygonal object. Uh, when I have the polygonal object, that means I'm going to pull geometry out of one of these polygons. So if I go to the to the polygon faces and if I click on late, now I can easily select polygons. Okay, but let's think about how that is going to work. So if I look at it from this angle, okay, notice that in, uh, let me just uh, show you here on the side view, possibly. I would like to have some polygons in here that are going to be selected. So I'm going to select those polygons there. Okay. And that means I selected these guys over here. That's fine. Now, if you remember to, uh, to uh, create geometry, basically you just do control and drag. Now, when I drag that, that handle is a little too thick, okay? So I'm not going to do that in this particular case. I'm going to create what is called an extrude inner. So because the handle is going to go from here and then it's going to join down here, I'm going to go ahead and select these two as well. So I select the both parts where the handle is actually coming or gluing into the the, the mug itself. So if I press the letter M, I can see that down there, there is an extrude inner command. The, the shortcut is W. So I'm going to press the W key, and now my uh, mouse becomes that uh, extrude inner icon. So if I click outside here in an empty space, I can see that I'm creating that inner extrusion. So that's exactly what I want to create. So I'm going to do something like that. Perfect. So that means that I created additional geometry. And at the same time, I made that geometry a little smaller. So now, whenever I go to my Move tool or uh, Selection tool, and I press the Control key, and I move this axis to extrude that, now I can see that it's not too thick like before. Okay. So I'm going to just do one and then one more time, okay, those two. Now with that, I am going to, uh, I basically created that uh, extruded uh, part. So now I need to join these two guys together. And that's very simple. I go to my selection tool and uh, if I look at it from the bottom, I need to create a hole in there. So I create, I select those two polygons and press the delete key. So I made a hole. The same thing down here. I select those two polygons and delete key. So I made a hole. Now I'm going to use something called the bridge tool. And the bridge tool, if I go to the keyboard shortcut M, the bridge tool is uh, close to the top. The shortcut key is the letter B as bridge. So I press B and now my icon changes. Now the bridge tool works better if I go to the component tools and I select edges. By selecting the edges, that means that I can go to this edge of the lathe and I grab that edge and pull it until it joins this other edge. Be careful if you move your tool, it's, it's going to try to match wherever your mouse is pointing. So make sure that you're pointing to the corresponding edge that you want to join it to and let go. Once you do that, then you make sure that you look at the next edge and point to the corresponding edge on the other side and so on. So I'm going to go here and uh, let, there you go. If for any reason you select the wrong edge and pointing like that and you create a mistake, make sure that you just go back and undo that last action until you get it right. So no problem. You can make mistakes and then correct them later if necessary. There you go. Now I go ahead and select this edge in the inside like that. And then the final edge is this one on the outside. Perfect. Now I have created 
that handle. Of course, it looks chunky, square, but then we're going to have to put this late object inside what is called a subdivision surface. So I bring the subdivision surface to my object manager and make sure I put it down here so my late uh, shape, my polygonal, goes there. And if I look, then this is what I created. Now, in this case, as you can see, the handle is a little squarish. <laughs> it looks a little squarish in there. And that is because uh, we didn't even tweak anything. So what we need to do is go ahead and select the point tool over here. Make sure you go to the selection tool and grab these three points. Okay. And by looking at it with the subdivision surface enable, I can move those points down so I can start tweaking my uh, element over here. Let me see that I'm selecting all those points. Perfect. Yes, I am. So I can start modifying these things. Okay. So just by doing that, I'm going to select these points over here. And let me make sure that I'm selecting correctly. Okay, this three and this three over here. And I'm going to move them up. So they look something like that. Okay. If you think the handle is a little too big, too thick, then we can still select, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to select the polygons. Okay, so maybe these faces over here and these ones over here. I'm pressing the shift key to add more and then the scale tool and kind of like compress them, like sandwich them like so and see the results. Okay. And possibly that's something that, that you like. Okay. Now I can move the, those polygons if I want to here so I can add more curvature to that. All right. So you can see, you can move edges, points, or polygons, whatever you want, to modify this uh, little handle there. And uh, even here, you can even move that down or up, whatever you want. But basically, this is the idea of creating a coffee mug using or starting off with a laid object. So if I render, this is what I'm going to be getting. And of course, I probably need to tweak this edge as you can see the edge after we converted or apply the subdivision surface then it became a little too curvy as you can see because we there is no geometry there so if that is the case then we probably need to add a cut in here or more polygons so i'm going to go ahead and bring my knife tool so m for modeling k for knife and I'm going to go here into my late object, my knife tool, and make sure that the mode for the knife is called loop. So I go here and I cut very close to the edge on top. Of course, make sure that you don't have anything selected. So click outside, bring the knife tool again, and then click. There you go, there is one. And then also in the inside, boom, there you go. Now, whenever I enable the subdivision surface, now I get that edge perfectly created. Alrighty? So that is the way to create that using the late object. I'm going to save this incremental. Now let's go to the loft basically is going to be exactly the same as the late so go ahead in here uh, in the loft objects current state to object turn off the traffic lights and now i have the polygonal object there now the polygonal object in the loft it creates these three elements so that means I'm, i have to join them so because it's three elements and I don't want three elements. So to join them, I go back to objects and then I create something called connect the objects and then delete the original objects. In this case, I do want to delete those three objects. So connect, delete objects and boom, it just gives me one object. Okay. 
Now, after I do that, then I go to my points mode and make sure that I go into my mesh menu, uh, the commands, and I'm going to optimize this model because there might be some points that are too many <laughs> and I'm just going to optimize and make sure that everything is nice and clean. Now that I have that, then I can go and once again, I go to, uh, let's say, to uh, the left side. Perfect. And I'm going to go to the Live Selection tool, Polygonal tool, and I'm going to select the polygons that I want to deal with. So if that is the polygon that I want to deal with, that is in here. So just like before, I'm going to select the ones here at the bottom, just like before. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing. M, T, or actually W for extrude inner. And I'm going to extrude inner something like this. If I see that this proportion, you know, the, of these uh, polygons over here are not what I like, I can actually select only those. And with my scale tool, you know, kind of like rescale them. Make sure that they are oriented perfectly. There you go. And now select back these other four and do exactly the same as before with my control key. Drag one time, drag another time, and then go ahead and select the polygons that are at the bottom here. Make a hole. Select these two polygons, make a hole. Bring the bridge tool, M, B, and start connecting these guys. Of course, I need to go to the edge. So from here to here, and from here to here. I'm basically closing this hole very simple with the bridge tool. Okay, from here to there, and from here to here. And the last one here to here, the corresponding edges perfectly. I'm going to do exactly the same as before, that I'm going to put this guy inside a subdivision surface, put it there, and once again, we're still with the same problem of the square corners and so forth, and you probably already know how to fix that. So just make sure that you go ahead and select the points that you want to move. In this case, it seems like we have more points. Okay, so, you know, because the geometry is a little different than what we created before. So it depends on the method that you use. Your handle might look a little different. Okay, and so forth. So by doing that, now let's take a look at the rim over here. And the rim seems to look nice, perfect. Everything seems okay. So that's a nice coffee cup, coffee mug in there. Perfect. Nice. So I'm going to save this as incremental. So it saves a copy. Now I'm going to close this and go back to my polygonal object. With the polygons object, we can still tweak it a little more because it's still in the polygonal mode as we created before. So what I'm going to do here is go ahead and select my cylinder go into the polygons, selection tool, the cylinder, and I'm going to select this polygon and this polygon. So you can see in this one, we don't need to do any extrude inner, it's already a nice size. So the only thing I'm going to do is control drag one time, control drag another time. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead, select polygon underneath, erase, the polygon here on top, erase, and with my bridge tool, MB, I'm just going to create the connection between this guy and this guy, using, of course, the edge tool, the edge uh, component tool, and moving these guys like so, very simply, make sure I see those two corresponding edges at one given time. Perfect. Perfect. 
Now if I put this guy inside my subdivision surface, then I have a similar problem, of course. But then in this case, I might not fix that because the hole is a little too small. So I'm going to go ahead and live selection, uh, polygons, or actually I could use edges. So U for selection and L for loop selection. Actually, I need ring selection. So U and uh, what is the ring selection? It's called B. Okay, perfect. So I select these guys. And I just move them out a little bit. There you go. So, okay, so I have my polygonal coffee mug ready to go. And if I need to tweak it, for example, make it larger on top or whatever, then I just move the polygons or resize the whole thing. So, for example, if I think it's a little too, <laughs> too short, I can go ahead and do this. And of course, fix this handle a little bit. Okay, so that is my uh, coffee mug. Let me see how the border is over here. Mm, it's a little too sharp. So let's see what's going on. Well, we have the same problem. So if you remember how we fixed this problem before, go into the cylinders, polygons, make sure you don't have any polygons selected, and go back to the M shortcut, K for knife, and make sure you have the loop mode enabled. Cut a tiny bit in here, very close to the edge. And let's take a look. So if we look in here, now we have a perfect border of mug. There you go. That's nice. Okay, so we have our mug in there. Now I can see before I even go, I can see that this roundness over here is bothering me a little bit, right? Don't you? So I'm going to take this off and I'm going to do to add a, a knife cut in here. So now that I have the, the knife already selected, I'm going to go get close to here and I'm just going to add a knife cut right in here. Boom. And also another one over here. So I am cutting or adding geometry right there at the base of the handle. So when I enable that, now I have a better handle, okay? And it's not so round in there. Okay, so I achieved giving it a little more uh, class, finesse to my model. Okay, so this is my... Uh, uh, my, the end of the tutorial and um, I hope to see you in a future tutorial. Let me know if you have any questions or comments in regards of this uh, in regards to these uh, tutorials. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.